All right, so this is a suggestion via a donation. The name of the video is Life Inside of a Tiny Home. Is it Purgatory or the Final Destination? Because <laughs> that's a crazy title, guys. But all right, let's get it. Listen, I always thought that um, for the most part, um, like tiny home living was kind of be, going to be the way of the future for the most part, right? Like downscale everything, you know, just take up less space on Earth. You get what I'm saying here, guys? Um, I've never heard really any terrible stories regarding it. I just looked at it like it probably is some type of purgatory for me. I need a lot of space. I don't know what it is. I just need space. I don't want to. I don't want to see my wife every five minutes of the day, bro. I can't. All right. But all right, let's get it. Let's check it out. Well, most people see tiny homes as a holiday home. This is not a holiday for me. I'm homeless. It seemed more affordable for us to build our own. How are you homeless and you have a tiny home? It's not a holiday for me. I'm homeless. It seemed more affordable for us to build our own tiny home than continue renting. If you go and live in that, and there's a bushfire, and it's going to catch fire and go up very quickly. Right, the whole thing. Yeah, you have any type of fire in a tiny home, that whole, your whole tiny home is done. With soaring rental and housing prices across the country, people are looking for cheaper alternatives. Uh, Australia? I've come to Queensland to meet two people hmm. who've been priced out of the market and have now found their own solution. Hello, Rochelle. Hi. Nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Thank Come you on very in. much. Oh, nice. So, how how big is this place? Um, it's two point two meters high, uh, two point two meters wide. Uh, that's like, I just times everything by three. Just times it by three, basically, and you get the feet. And the length is four point two meters. It's very compact. You got to be good with your space management. Right. Yeah. Every, every surface counts. There's always. Um, extra effort that you have to do to live in a tiny house because things have got to be moved in order to make things functional. And that is bed mode. Because I don't have a toilet here yet, my landlady's been very gracious and giving me a key so I can access um, the toilet facilities in there. I also pay for my share of the electricity and water. So here's my sink and obviously I keep my dishes separate because obviously I need to wash my hands during the day. Um, so all my dirty dishes go in there and I just generally pop it away so you can't see it. Um, and then that gives me extra bench space. And when I want to cook dinner, I can just um, pop my electric stove up here. Okay, guys, as of right now, it does sound like it's extremely similar to like van life. And just be fully aware, we complain about the real estate market in the United States of America. Guys, we have nothing on Australia. All right, Australia is going crazy. 1.4 million Australian dollars for like junk. And when I mean, when I mean junk, I mean like 1.4 million dollars for like maybe a two floor burnt out house with no insides. You're gonna have to remodel. You have to not even remodel. You're gonna have to rebuild the basically the entire house. You're buying the land. Um, I don't understand it. Um, I don't know how people can afford that out there, but. I understand why tiny tiny homes are kind of like, I guess, becoming a thing out there, but, but all right, let's go. Rochelle has been living in a tiny crazy. house for nine months. She and her daughter were in a two bedroom unit before the landlord sold it. She needed to stay in the same area so that her daughter's final year of high school was not interrupted by changing schools. You have two people in there? But the prices had increased substantially, pricing her out of the market. It was the most stressful time of my life. You know, I've got a daughter in grade 12. I'm working full time. I was pouring everything into trying to find a home for us. And there's just nothing. At one point I said to my daughter, I'm so sorry, but we're just gonna have to put our energy into the tiny house. Feel it staked in. Good boy. The purchase price was $20,000. I bought it off Gumtree. Then I've put another $20,000 in it to rent it. Gumtree is like a, like a Craigslist, I think. I bought it off Gumtree. Then I've put another $20,000 in it to renovate it because I had to completely gut it. Rochelle has parked her tiny house in her friend's backyard where she connects to their power and water. Tiny houses are caravan-like houses built on wheels or trailers so they can be towed to different locations. They're similar in size to a shipping container. The whole house is only 16 by eight feet. Tiny houses started in the US 30 years ago and are often promoted online as glamorous ways to downsize and live outside cities. 
over the last 15 years. Yeah, Australia, bro, I don't know. They've grown in popularity as weekend retreats on holiday rental sites. Yeah, okay. If it's just a, just going to be like for that purpose, I can imagine a tiny home could be work could work just to like you know it'll be cool for the weekend. But I'm not sure about full time living in a tiny home, guys. I'm just gonna be honest, I'm not sure about that. And everything that she's saying is basically for the most part making it sound terrible. She spent forty thousand dollars total. She's all in forty thousand dollars on this. This is where I had to pour all my money because I know that this rental crisis isn't going away anytime soon. I'm not going to get back into the rental market, let alone buy my own property. The rental market is bleak across the country with just 1% of rental properties available nationally. Oh, it's, an, it's a supply issue there? Oh, those, those rents are probably crazy. Now it kind of makes sense when I, when I, when I read that um, literally $1.4 million is basically uh, the cost of... Uh, a, a house you're gonna have to rebuild and complete to completion guys that's basically so yeah, it makes sense now that is the a lot more sense april 2006 and the brisbane market where rochelle is living is below brisbane the rate with 0.7 percent of rental property bro you're not pronouncing the a brisbane brisbane brisbane, Bris brisbane. i got it let's get it in terms of affordable rentals that is rental properties that cost less than 400 dollars a week Brisbane is less affordable than Perth, Adelaide, and Melbourne, with only 13% of rental properties under $400. And the Sunshine Coast is even less affordable, with only 4.6% of rental properties under $400. Hi, Hello. Angela. You're welcome. Lovely. Thank you. I, mean, I will say, though, this one does look a lot better, but I'm guessing it's also a lot more money. How long have you been living here? We have been here since mid-August, so, so yeah, about coming up to six months. Can you put Wait, this no. one down? Angela and her son Seb and the Lion were in the same rental on the Sunshine Coast for three and a half years before it was sold. To find a place big enough for all three of them, Angela says she would have been paying more than $500, nearly double her previous rent. A good half my wage would have gone to rent. A year ago I'd explored the option of a tiny house but wasn't able to obtain finance at the time. Um, so when I looked at the prices of rentals I just thought well, what do I really want to be doing? So I went back to that place and I made, we made it work. Um, finance became available. Angela then found a landowner willing to let her set up her tiny house long term. But her local council says people who live in a tiny home need to apply for a temporary home permit. It that's happening everywhere nowadays. Like, that is absolutely happening. And it's crazy because, listen, these people are trying to escape. Well, obviously, they're trying to escape. They're just trying to live. Let's just say that. They're trying to live, right? Um, kind of somewhat off the grid, right? But obviously, if you go into any of these areas where um, it's where, where tiny homes are not like the, the majority or are people who live in trailers and things like that, yeah, they're going to they're gonna instantly expect for you to... Um, start paying your taxes in this area. It costs $514 and lasts for 18 months. Right. I have decided not to get the temporary home permit. They're going to kick you out. Because it's not a temporary home. On this property, we have I think five dwellings um, that aren't council approved. A lot of tiny houses, caravans, buses do get moved along from council. We're sort of counting down the time until we are also vacated from the land. It's going to happen soon. It feels unfortunately really uncertain, our future here. Um, it feels as though we can't put our roots down. Tiny homes are a great solution to the housing crisis. We've got people like myself buying the homes. My builder has a home completed every week. And you've got landowners that are willing to open up their land and share with people but there's hesitancy because they're worried about repercussions with council the sunshine coast council declined an on-camera interview but instead gave us a written statement council remains committed to advocating to other levels of government for collaborative action to address housing affordability in recognition of the housing crisis and cost of living sunshine coast council waived permit fees for those having to temporarily live in a tent car, caravan or mobile home. 
town. So then the tiny home should obviously classify somewhere under mobile home. Live in a tent, car, caravan, or mobile home. Council has obligations to protect and manage health and safety, the environment, and reduce impacts on nearby properties and public spaces. Town okay, the problem is with this here, at least, uh, the this is it's on private property but who knows i mean listen the law is obviously different i can't imagine someone let's say let's say you owned 100 acres uh in let's say montana right i can't imagine someone coming in and saying you can't put this on your property <clears throat> that's rough bro I, I listen planning academic paul burton has been researching tiny houses. that's extremely rough bro. and says the number of people living in them permanently is growing we reckon there's maybe a thousand or so people live permanently in tiny houses on wheels. Mm -hmm. Paul believes tiny houses are one solution to the housing crisis and wants local councils to review laws around temporary dwellings. I think councils just need to be more thoughtful about how they want to regulate tiny house living. It may have been a policy that you devised some many, years many years ago. ago right. Circumstances have changed. You go, Hasn't well, evolved. Actually, a housing crisis. And we'd like to make some land available for somebody to come along and put a cluster of tiny houses here. Despite being an advocate for tiny houses, Paul says they have their limitations. We could make a tiny house out of wood. It look lovely. It look beautiful. But if you go and live in that in you know, Gippsland and there's a bushfire, then you're sitting in something that a few sparks. Yeah, kindling. And it's going to catch fire right. and go up very quickly. What happens if it gets flooded? You know, the same. The, the same thing. This is the problem that I've had being a single mum for 16 years. It's very hard for me to enter back into the real estate market. So this is something I don't see myself moving out of anytime soon. Guys, listen. I think with how the world is going to most likely end up having to go in terms of all of these crazy countries overpricing everything, mostly based off of inflation that has hit the entire planet for some reason, how can something that we made up be punishing us? That's weird. Okay, let's fix that firstly. Um, all I can really speak about is in the United States of America, at least, um, we definitely need to probably bring on some tiny homes or make small, affordable housing for like first time buyers. That'll probably be the best thing for us. Uh, because the guys, for the most part, again, in America, I'm not sure the average person can afford a 20% down payment um, on a house that's costing $400,000, right? I'm just not, I'm not sure someone has I don't know, 80 to $100,000 sitting in their bank account. Um, if they did, then they probably wouldn't be complaining, I'd say, right? But either way, listen, let me know in the comments um, the next thing I should be checking out, subject-wise, and I will get into that as soon as I possibly can, all right? And listen, you guys all have an absolutely amazing day and enjoy your day thoroughly.